So I am uh, today here uh, also in the quality of a member of the Ethics Commission of, the, of our university, of uh, UPT. And uh, I would like to make a small presentation, a quick presentation of the activity of what we do, uh, what, uh, what this ethics committee is meant to do at our university. Um, mainly it's, uh, let's say, non-traditional uh, institution of, the, of our university. It's relatively recent. So uh, it's, it has been born sometimes, uh, sometime in 2015. Uh, until then, uh, we had uh, ethics committees on demand. So for actions that were needed for a situation that, uh, that required uh, uh, intervention on an ethical level. Also, we have an ethics committee. Um, I have to say that uh, all uh, institutions in Romania are required by law um, from 2018 to have ethics committees and ethics codes. So it's something relatively new to the public sector. Um, private companies, some private companies had ethics uh, codes and uh, ethics committees, but uh, yeah, to the public sector, it is an innovation. So also every university in Romania has to have an ethics code and an ethics committee. And because every university is autonomous, it's, um, well, there are differences. Not large differences, but well, there are some differences in uh, some of the values, some interpretations, and of course in some of the uh, procedures. So let's start with an overview of uh, our committee, uh, what we do. Um, we uh, are mainly bound by the ethics code and the university charter, and um, we are also required by the education law to have um, a, a committee on uh, ethics. And um, we also have a special regulation that is different from the code of ethics that um, pertains to our activity. Um, as a general rule, uh, we have um, 11 members, so 10 members and the president of our committee. Um, one of the members is required to be a student, so it's a representative of the student. Perhaps you know, every university has a senate, and in every senate also the students are represented. Many of them don't know, but yeah, let's, let's repeat that. So um, also, we um, the student member rotates um, annually or biannually uh, as it is required when uh, her or his mandate expires. Um, the mandate is for four years. Uh, we have a limit for two terms for each member, so it not be like for life in this committee, it would be absurd and it would be contrary to, uh, to the ethical standards of the commission. And uh, well, you see that every member has to be proposed by the faculty, has to be approved uh, by the UPT management board, which is an executive um, part of our university, has to be endorsed by the Senate and has to be named by the rector of the university. So this ensures uh, wide control over the naming of the members, so as the quality of the members uh, is uh, well, very high, they are accepted, because every member has to be accepted by the entire community. We don't have a referendum, but well, this uh, mechanism ensures that uh, they are quite impartial and well, they're not contested. Uh, also, uh, the committee is um, independent, even if it is named by and approved by and so on, by every um, part of the university. Um, we are independent, so not the Senate, the Rector, nobody can make any pressures on our decisions. Yeah? So even if they are our bosses nominally, we are free to decide on any matter. 
the main documents are the Code of Ethics and the Ontology and the reg our regulation on the functioning and organization of the Ethics Committee. Um, of course, um, and this is very important, what are our guiding principles? These uh, principles are both in the Code of Ethics and in the regulation uh, pertaining to the functioning of uh, our committee. These are our um, well, values and principles, actually. Uh, you can see here, I won't read them uh, to you, uh, but they are all equal. So we cannot say that legality is perhaps uh, more important than fairness or good faith and so on. Yes. So these are the guiding uh, principles to our commission, and they are, of course, guiding principles for all members of our university. Because the ethics code provides the same principles uh, as guiding principles to anyone who is a student, who is a professor, who is a, I don't know, a maintenance worker, a technical lab assistant, whatever. So uh, we call it in the ethics committee the UPT community. Yeah. So this is a uh, byword for the scientific community within our university. This is. Uh, is the, the meaning of it. So we are guided by all these principles which are uh, equal and of course we can be sanctioned if he, uh, any member of uh, the ethics committee, the committee can be sanctioned um, and can be removed from the committee if she or he um, act against these uh, guiding principles. Yeah, so you can see it's very uh, yeah, normal for uh, of course, the public interest, because we're a public institution, is maybe a bit special. But don't forget, education in general is a public interest. So it's normal that we act in the, uh, under the guiding principle of the primacy of public interest. Um, so independence, respect for the right to defense, of course, each of these principles gets uh, developed within the uh, ethics code and in the regulation regarding our function. So they are detailed actually, what uh, each of these uh, principles means in practice. But if you have questions, <laughs> I'm glad that we got to answer them. Um, what are our main, what is our main role, or what are our main roles? Uh, to implement the code of ethics within the university, to uh, act within these principles and, well, uh, the final destination is to develop a respectful institutional culture so as to ensure the freedom of each member of the university community and to increase individual responsibility. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as you know, ethical rules are always meant as having an educational role. You cannot say that an ethics code is there and when you have a problem you go and look into the ethics code and then you apply it and everything will be good. No, these rules are meant to um, transmit to us some values that we have to live every day, in every moment of our activity. So it's a bit uh, perhaps too much to say that the ethics committee it's meant to educate the members of our community because we don't have a teaching attribution as such. Uh, my colleague Solin Suchu and I and another colleague of ours, we are teaching um, academic ethics, but this is a coincidence for me. Yeah, it's, we are not uh, permanent members of the ethics committee or something like this. So we are not required to teach. But uh, this is one of the roles, it's an educational role. And perhaps for the future, we will talk also about future challenges, it would be nice to have maybe a project through which the committee together with the well, Senate of the university tries to educate, to bring these values to the members of the academic community. Because in our activity, we have seen that unfortunately the existence of the ethics code and of the ethics committee is not very well known. So there are, of course, the students in the first year that don't know it's normal, 
Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, ethics, academic ethics, is uh, mandatory only for master's students. So in their first three or four years, they don't know about it. And uh, we made an uh, well, it's not an official inquiry or statistic, but we made uh, some forms of examinations with our master students, and we found out that they didn't know that it would have been good for them to have known as students, as bachelor students, about the existence of these regulations and about the committee, and that some bad things have happened because they didn't know. Yeah. So um, we also have um, these new objectives, very important, the prevention part. So here we have to work, and maybe there will be in future some projects as to disseminate knowledge about the ethics committee, how it works, and what its role is, so as to fill up and to live up to this role. And of course, the rest is uh, assuring the compliance with the rules of ethics. You know, academic ethics means many things, yeah? but mainly it's uh, the prevention of plagiarism, the teaching of ethics in 2018 in Romania has been introduced specifically with the aim of reducing plagiarism and academic imposture and so on. Yeah. But uh, also <coughs> the other rules which are very important so as to prevent harassment, for example, discrimination or other forms of corrupt behavior, yeah. sabotage, whatnot. Yeah. There is no limit to human imagination. So this is our role. And our activity, yeah, we have annual reports in, in, which are uh, publicly available, unfortunately only in Romania. So for our guests who want to see a bit about uh, ethics at our university, we have only the ethics code and the regulation in English, the rest is in Romania at this moment, maybe in future because our university strives for internationalization. We will uh, dedicate a uh, part in English or some other languages um, as to see what the ethics committee does. Um, there has been, let's say, since the pandemics, a sharp increase in our activity. Uh, maybe it has to do with uh, the rising awareness of the existence of our ethics committee. Um, before that, it was, you know, two or three cases a year. One of those wasn't uh, in our jurisdiction. And it wasn't uh, very intense. Um, but, um, well, in, uh, in the last uh, two years, the cases have sharply increased. Everything from plagiarism, uh, problems between colleagues, uh, harassment, discrimination, and, of course, problems between teachers and students, unfortunately. Yeah. It is a good sign that the cases have increased because the dark number is possibly higher. So what we see here is always the tip of the iceberg. Let's, uh, let's remember, when we were students, we were all a bit shy. And it wasn't our first reflex to go to an ethics committee and say, I have been discriminated, uh, the teacher addresses uh, somewhat without respect and so on. Yeah, we all accepted this when we were students, we didn't know. Yeah, but maybe raising awareness will lead to higher numbers. And this is not a bad thing. It's more awareness. Yeah, so the problems get solved. They're, they don't get hidden away, locked away, and we don't talk about them. So this is, um, this is of course, my personal experience. Uh, we don't have a statistic. We have only have the annual reports, and that's it. And they were they are available for everyone to see, to study, and well, for the Senate and uh, uh, administration board to take some measures. At the moment, we are only working on improving the uh, ethics code. So this is our outlook. We have um, some things to do still. And very important, um, as I said, ethics is a framework that is always developing, yes, and uh, 
that has to be lived by, by the members of the community. Otherwise, it is paper. It's dead. Yeah? So uh, it's very important that we continually improve and review our code of ethics and make all the necessary amendments. It hasn't. Uh, it, it, it's, otherwise, it's it's a dead piece of work, yeah, like a law that's not applied. And of course, we're open for proposal of improving uh, the ethics uh, code and our activity also from the members of the university. So everyone can come with improvements and with uh, her or his own ideas. And um, this is also very important for our intended opening, our internationalization, that we open a bit so we, we erode the language barriers. Because at the moment, all proceedings are only in Romanian, the courts are in Romanian. Uh, every document has to be submitted in Romanian to our committee, and yeah, that's, that's maybe a problem, a steep problem for some. But we will see in future how this, uh, how this develops.